Episode 275, Exercise, A Critic Cannot Create. You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilson. Howdy doody partners and welcome to the very best podcast in the world. Your only source in the universe for personal supremacy through health, wealth, and happiness. My name is LH Jr. and I'm gonna be your host. Well, <laughs> honestly though, uh, yesterday's episode kind of fell victim to a small fucky wucky that happened on the technological side of things and so therefore we just gonna put it in the ditch and we're gonna do today's episode <laughs> basically uh as a replacement for yesterday sorry for uh that um uh, yeah, I uh, recorded, uploaded, but uh, I don't know. Somehow the timer went apeshit and decided not to publish. So, um, uh, yeah, sorry you had to live without your favorite podcast uh, for 24 hours. <laughs> My God, I love self-irony. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, critics and uh, not so much qualified critics, but the negative Nancys and the whiners and uh, the wingers and the palms and, you know, all of those folks uh, from the uh, dastardly negative side of the force, <laughs> the dark side. Uh, and um, before we get started on that, uh, it's housekeeping as every day. Uh, in that uh, sharing is caring, which is item number one, always. Uh, so if you don't share these episodes, uh, every time you don't share it, God is going to kill an innocent little kitten. Picture the cutest kitchen kitten in the world, and God is going to slash that throat. <laughs> right? No, but honestly, uh, we set out with this podcast on a mission to uh, kind of... Um, well, it was a persiflage against all of these wallet rapists uh, who take your money, uh, you know, to sell you courses. And that makes you feel good, puts you on a short high. And then they ask you to buy more courses. And if you say, I don't have the money anymore, they go, well, max out your credit card. Because after the next course, you're going to be totally, totally, totally successful. Promise. Uh, their promise then results in them taking off in their Lambo or Bentley or, you know, whatever uh, their uh, car of choice is while sticking you the finger uh, and leaving you uh, in your terrible debt and so on and so forth. Uh, item number two views here in are my own. And uh, that will always be blah, blah, blah. Don't represent. Blah. Item number three, uh, construction mode and remodeling mode, finally settling down a bit. Uh, but therefore, we're going into stuffy nose season because uh, we had to put on the fireplace uh, for a few days in a row now. Uh, you know, yeah, that global warming thing, mm. <laughs> that ain't really panning out. Uh, and um, that was basically the end of housekeeping. So, uh, I came across this. There are many, 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 many favorite, favorite, favorite <laughs> right? Famous people, uh, who were attributed a quote, uh, similar to the title of this episode. And, uh, all of them were right. Uh, right. Because if you, uh, look up in, on Wikipedia, um, you know, uh, models of criticism, varieties of criticism, I think the article is called, you get this ginormous list of different forms of criticism. And uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> right? However, it paints a picture of the uh, complexity of criticism. Now, the problem with, um, uh, with uh, critics is uh, it, criticism itself is a genuine skill if it is qualified. Right. And that's what we have to keep in the picture. So uh, qualified criticism means in turn, hey, you know, this is wrong. 
This is how you can make it better. That will be, you know, something helpful that people can actually work with, right? Now you have the destructive folks out there who are just nagging the entire time and they know everything better. But if you put them to the test and say, look, do it better, you know, make, do, make, a, make an effort at least, you know, to show me that you know what you're talking about. And then, you know, they're not that they're not that verbal anymore all of a sudden because you know they're that's just their negative mindset kind of ruling them out now it's insanely insanely easy to criticize right and to say well that 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 sucked but um the problem is if you criticize uh the question is do you have the uh intellectual capacity to uh i don't know coherently express uh, what you are actually criticizing, right? Can you bring that down to a point, you know, and I need you for this exercise to remember the last time you criticized someone, how did that go? Was it the whining bit where you said, you know, look, that sucks. Or was it more like, Hey, that sucks comma, because it is my interpretation that, and here is how you could do a better job, period. <laughs> so with all the comma and all the punctuation in there, that's going to get all difficult. Uh, anywho, um, the thing about criticism is that you need to be very reflected uh, when you criticize someone. And you need to be willing to walk the extra mile because somebody's going to have put a lot of work, well, maybe not a lot, but you know, maybe a significant amount of work, let's leave it with that, uh, into something, and then you come and destroy their motivation with your unfounded and unqualified criticism, right? If you take example A. Uh, if it's B, then, you know, you've done a good job. And uh, if you want to be the real hero of the fish pond, you know, it's like you sit your ass down with them and show them how it's done. Then you are allowed to to criticize in my understanding, right? Long story, uh, when, I, when I wrote my first book, uh, I got, you know, a lot of uh, criticism because formatting was a bit off and didn't look too pretty. You know, yeah, I could have done a better job, but I was exhausted uh, because into this book went uh, <laughs> you know, so much fucking research. I self-published uh, because I was hot for the money uh, because the margins are just significantly higher, but that's a totally different topic. Uh, I did everything myself, the research. How do you self-publish? What platforms are out there? How do you do it? Uh, I did the writing right? I did the editing together with a friend uh, who was very constructive, uh, you know, rest in peace, Marco. And uh, it was just this insane journey that you went through. And then all of a sudden you've got this, you know, thing in your hand and then somebody comes along and they, but the formatting is off. <laughs> and, you know, you, you just want to, you just want to take that book and just jam it into their jaws and break their jaw. Uh, but you don't want to get the paper dirty and bloody and everything. So you kind of self-control. Um, but it goes to say that, you know, I talked with one friend upon receiving the book and you know, I was like, God damn it, this is great. You know, there's a new opportunity for you, you know, and, and writing something down, um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, just in the format of a book, kudos, you know, and he didn't even notice. Uh, I think there was a typo in there as well. I can't, re can't even recall. Uh, but you know, it was just this interesting journey and there were, you know, those people who immediately saw the negative and then there were the people who saw the positive. Now, what I would have wished for was, you know, something in the middle, right? Where somebody said, look, you know, uh, let's do another, um, uh, iteration, right? A version two, uh, you know, you can do a little bit better perhaps on the, uh, on the indentations and the margins and, you know, oh boy, there is a typo in there, uh, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, that's just in that, that would have been something that I would have actually wished for, you know, and then to, I don't know, have a big 
big, big box of beer, sit down with that person and just edit the whole thing again and then publish another iteration of it. Never happened, got busy with projects, yada, 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 the rest is history. But um, this is an exercise and uh, an exercise episode because it is Friday. And uh, so my appeal to you as an exercise would be to, uh, you know, kick the recliner back and uh, go into your inner self and search for your pattern of criticizing and do research on how to criticize and what varieties of criticism there are. Uh, when is one term of criticism appropriate? Uh, and when is the other form of criticism appropriate? And um, when you criticize someone the next time that you get presented something, uh, have the decency to work with them to make it better. If you already, uh, you know, take the liberty to criticize work that somebody else has done, prove your point. So in that sense, I was, I hope, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I was able uh, to make sense of uh, today's episode, um, uh, of today's exercise, really, uh, which is about, you know, criticizing correctly and thereby actually, you know, going the, walking the extra mile, sitting down with someone, helping them improve is uh, the actual process where you go into creation mode, where things really start to get interesting and fun. So, uh, in that sense, have a nice weekend. Uh, I think everything is said. Yep, everything is said. <laughs> have a nice weekend. And uh, we'll be back on Monday to a whole new week. And uh, sorry again for yesterday's episode that got uh, shoved into data nirvana. Peace out, take care, and uh, let's be back in touch on Monday.